Another thing before you install the shift drum, if you do pull it out and remove the forks, um, this is the old broken, broken one. If you look, you can see uh, where this cast iron, where the holes are, it's kind of hard to tell. But this is a sharp edge um, right around here where the holes are, are made cast in. Uh, you can see where they did some radiusing or chamfering here. Um, what you really want to do to make a smooth movement is you want to file or die grind all these sharp edges nice and smooth and so you don't get any these things can crack if they're under load if there's something else wrong and if they crack that's a lot of actually a big problem so what you want to do basically is just chamfer all the way around um, I know it's kinda hard to tell but um, if I can get that close enough you can see where it has been radius but if you look inside there's still a sharp edge here and a pretty sharp edge there so what you want to do is make sure this is a nice rounded uh, chamfer all the way around here so there's a, a lot less likely uh, hood of uh, the shift drum breaking uh, just a couple of things with the shift drum uh, I like to put a very 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 thin uh, coat of grease inside the cases where the uh, shift drum goes and light coating on the shift drum and inside the forks a super super light coating um, there's a lot of um, uh, friction here actually and if you don't do that or basically slather uh, everything with oil before you install everything uh, it when you get the motor together it would be virtually impossible to shift or very difficult a lot of guys have a problem with that to get the motor together and it just won't shift and it's just due to the large uh, friction area here so I like to put a little grease on it myself very light coat um, for that just in case because I don't know how long the motor is going to sit before it's assembled so a couple of other things uh, your lockdown tabs for your bolts um, I'll, I'll, I'll reuse them once if they've never been uh, loosened I'll reuse them once uh, uh, most guys would rather just replace them every time so uh, but in this case these look good there were no cracks or anything so I reuse those uh, they were in good shape make sure you bend up both tabs uh, it's easy to bend and you can also make sure you bend around uh, the corners if you have to get on the corner and your lock tabs are actually bent all the way down flat there so that's basically it uh, your shift door forks um, always check for uh, bends or burns uh, the first 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 gear is usually the ones that bent or burned up really bad uh, so uh, make sure you check all the forks for um, um, damage now a light burnings you get a light burning with most of them so that's not a big deal uh, it's when it starts cutting into the metal if you have any kind of lip there then you really should replace the fork um, like I said, uh, first gear is difficult to find. The other two are, are not too bad at all. But make sure your forks are straight and not, um, not I call it ditching because it cuts a ditch, a ditch in there. So make sure those are in good shape. Uh, this uh, video is for the installation of the shift drum, shift forks, and transmission. Uh, again, not a difficult procedure, but a few things you have to look out for. Or, again, you can start break or damage parts. Uh, the main parts here or the uh, shift hold down this is for when you shift the gears this holds the drum in a specific place for the gear so this arm pivots on the shoulder bolt here uh, some guys will make the mistake not realizing it is shoulder they'll try to tighten this down they'll tighten it down against this arm the arm can't move so the transmission doesn't work properly so the main thing to be sure of is you get the uh, the hold down arm onto the shifter sh the shifter shoulder here uh, bolt shoulder before uh, ever this gets tightened down uh, you've got these two hold down bolts this is the plate that holds the shift drum in place now the forks hold the gear in place and the shift drum obviously holds a fork in place now, there's a lot of force on these two and if they do get loose they'll actually bend or break off that'll make, let the shift drum move which actually can let the transmission pop out of gear and that gets pretty violent uh, violent enough as you can see this other shift drum that had happened on this on this particular motor and as you can see it actually just cracked and broke and destroyed the uh, shift drum so it's very important that these stay tight um, as with the hold down bolt here I uh, clean the bolts really good with carb cleaner get all the oil off I also uh, 
use carb cleaner in the bolt holes, the screw holes, use a um, few Q-tips there and clean them out till they're totally clean. And then I'll use blue Loctite on all three of these. Uh, so make sure um, these are Loctited because there's no locking mechanism on this one uh, or the countersunk. The countersunk's there basically there for clearance for the shift arm that you'll probably see later. And uh, there's a st inside star washer on this uh, Phillips head there. So uh, make sure that there's also so you have basic a dual locking mechanism. Uh, as far as taking uh, these motors apart or putting them together, uh, invaluable tool is the uh, impact driver. Uh, they're cheap, 10 to 15 bucks at your local uh, auto parts store. It's invaluable, uh, very simple to use. Um, it's an impact driver, so you actually get things very tight. It's also great for breaking loose those old bolts and, and screws have been in there uh, for two or three decades when you're taking the motor apart for the first time. So invaluable, got to have one of these or it'll, you'll just make a mess. Um, that's basically it for that, uh, except for when you, after you've impacted these both in, you'll see, since this has absolutely no locking mechanism, the factory staked it, this uh, countersunk screw into the uh, into the, the hole down. So I use, I'll take a small pin punch that's been sharpened or a sharp punch, and I'll just restake it. And that's again just a secondary because if this comes loose, it causes all sorts of problems. So that's uh, as far as mounting the shift drum there. Uh, I'll reposition the camera so we can uh, take a look at the transmission installation and a couple more things with the shift drum.